Hi, today I'm going to talk to you all about Google Classroom for speech pathologists and how to use it during distance learning and beyond. So make sure you're signed in with your work email. I am signed in with my personal for this demonstration. Go up to the right hand, upper right hand corner and click on that grid. You will see a whole host of the G Suite options. Scroll down to classroom. Now, that's my personal email, and it's interesting. You can even get Google Classroom even as a non-educator. So that, you know, that's my personal. So it's not an educator account. All right, create your class, and it, it does prompt you. Do you have G Suite for Education? You have to use that if you are in a school-based like uh, setting. However, you could still use Google Classroom if you are a speech pathologist working in EI or a private practice. There's a lot of really fantastic tools. Now, to keep everything separate, you must have a class for each kid. You must have a class for each kid to make sure that nobody else can see inside the classroom, like a teacher where they would have potentially just one class. So I'm going to put a fake child's name and say the subject is speech therapy. It does take about five seconds to load. So if you have a delay when you're doing this, don't feel bad. I just cut it out here. So you do get a class code. I think that that's useful if your student does have a G Suite or Gmail account through their school. Uh, but I'll show you later how to add um, them via email. So you can post right away. You post right on the, the front of the classroom. And you can see here, you only get one option and you cannot uncheck it. It says all students. So, you know, that's part of why you're going to need uh, one classroom for each student. However, I'm going to show you all the shortcuts and you will figure out that it's actually not hard to keep going with um, setting this up. So I'm going to make something up completely that I, I'm not assigning for homework, and this is a fake student, but I just made it up on the spot. Please work on your S sounds at the end of words this week. And I'm going to post it, but if I wanted to, I could add a PDF that I might have scanned um, or something I have on my, um, you know, my Google Drive, and I'll show you how to integrate your Google Drive into your Google Classroom. So I posted it, and so it's there for the student to read and the parent. And it just gives you, you know, it's really teacher friendly, but it's also really speech pathologist friendly too. Let me show you how to add somebody before we go any farther. Let me add, show you how to add somebody by email. You could invite them by name so that if you already had them in your contacts, like a student, it would come up automatically if you type their name, or you could type in an email. Actually, what could be really cool is if you put in the student's email and the parent's email so they both have access. I think that'd be cool. Let's create another classroom. It's the same exact procedure, but I want to show you some more features as we get going. Again, it wants you to use your G Suite if you are an educator. I definitely agree with that. Um, and here we go. We're going to create another fake name and calling it speech therapy and get going with that one. Just so you know, when you hit create, it does take about five seconds. So don't freak out if it's grayed out. The feature I, I actually really like is reuse announcements. So you can actually save time by clicking on an announcement for one class that can go to another. So I already had set up this first student. I'm going to pretend that they are working on the same thing. So I'm going to, it'll actually uh, auto-populate an announcement for you with what you had said in a previous class. So that saves time. You could modify this, add another PDF, um, but here I'm just going to go ahead and post it. So you can see that's on the wall of the Google Classroom. How fun is that? That icon on the upper right-hand corner, it's called a hamburger, those three lines. You, that'll take you to all of your classes. And here I just cut out me adding a third student. Just wanted to give you a little heads up on how you, on how you kind of organize your students here. And that little arrow leads you to grades, which you don't necessarily need. Just that was a quick little, sh just to show you. But what I really like is that you can click on that little folder 
and it'll show you a Google Drive folder just for that student. So you could share with their families the, everything in the folder, or you could easily auto-populate what you need to put into their Google Classroom. Isn't that cool? And um, let's say that, so they're all or organized by the date they are added, but you can easily switch around the people. So if you are done with that other student, you can put it towards the end. And if you're working on a student, you can bring them up to the front. Let's say if you added in 50 to 60 uh, students, 50 to 60 uh, Google Classrooms, you just easily modify who you're working with to come to the top. Um, just, I really am a huge fan. At first, I was overwhelmed by the idea of having a classroom for each student. But now that I've gotten into it, I'm super into Google Classroom just because of how nicely and seamlessly it integrates with the whole Google suite. Um, I'm just, I'm a fan. But hey, I hope you're a fan of this channel. I'd love it if you could subscribe. Comment below. I'd like to answer your questions. And, uh, you know, I think that this could be a really powerful tool for a lot of speech pathologists to keep track of a bunch of student work and communicate. Feel free to um, let me know what you think, and I will catch you in the next video. Thank you. Stay safe, and we'll talk soon.